Okay, good day. Uh, my, yeah. <laughs> I'm Jordan Smith from Rapido Trains Inc. And this is my buddy Jason. Are you buddy? I good told day. I told good day. Off the yeah. Start again. So, so like, good day. I'm Jordan Smith. No, uh, no that's just. Today, hey, I'm Jordan Smith from Rapido Trains Inc. This is my buddy Jason. How's it going, eh? How's it going? We're here today to install a rail crew switch machine. What's special about this, Jason? Can I just say that you're the most wooden YouTube performer that's ever been born? <laughs> I just want to let you know. Okay, we're installing take off. All right, hang on one second. <laughs> we're installing a rail crew yeah, switch yeah. machine on my layout, and the great thing about this switch machine is that the the target rotates and the handle rotates above the layout. All right, can we go now? I have your glasses. <laughs> Jeez, let's go. We start. Okay, this is how they arrive from the factory, a nice brown box. Beauty box, eh? Beauty, beauty, beauty. So this is a, um, uh, what's called a POS display, point of sale display. And so for stores, when they get a box like this, okay, they can open it up and then it becomes a countertop display for the store. And then you fold on the line, all right, do that. Okay, Havana, would you like to do the whole hand thing? Okay, is that working? We're doing the hand thing? It's working. <laughs> <laughs> you open her up. All right, and what do we have inside? So this is uh, your cribbing and uh, other plastic parts that if you want to build up your switch machine. Up by the track, okay. We've got uh, your panel for the fascia, if you so desire. This is all your switch stand parts, the etched targets are in there. This is the actual machine itself. Okay, there's, there's the machine, it's a cylinder. So if you're used to seeing a tortoise, a big box, this is a cylinder. Okay, we don't need that. All right, here's your switch. That's your metal bits. And here is your bilingual instructions in English and French. Uh, so this is your uh, your main castings with all the uh, all the switch stands on here. We have uh, the how many, uh, switch stands you have there. There's three. Uh, you know you should know this, eh? Like you work here. Yeah. Um, so you've got your Raccor 17B, your Raccor 31B, and that upside down one there is the Raccor uh, 20C over there. So you've got all your handles, um, and you've also got all your uh, your etched targets there. Okay, so you've got a whole variety of etched targets to choose from for. Beauty. Yeah, that's nice. Mm -hmm. We have uh, lots of ones that are useful on my layout. That's a coincidence. This is the machine itself. All right, as you can see, it's a cylinder. All right, because you're controlling your switch from the machine on, on layout surface level, this actually goes enters from the top. So this is great for a low profile uh, double deck or triple deck layout. Uh, and here's the terminal strip for connecting all the wires. We tell you where to put all the wires. So what type of toggle switch do you have there? Right, so this is a uh, momentary, so it's on, off, on, off, right? Uh, each machine takes about an amp on a 12 volt DC supply, but it only takes it for a fraction of a second. So you can actually power many different machines off of one 12 volt power supply, unless you're running them all at once. Um, as well, if you have an accessory decoder, you gotta make sure it's got momentary, because it's not like a, uh, a switch machine that stalls. If you, if you keep it on all the time, um, it'll get too hot and the switch inside will shut off your machine to prevent damage. So uh, it has to be momentary, just like that. Now look up, look way up. How's it going, eh? We're up on the third deck of the layout. Okay, Jason, so what's our first step? Well, first step, we gotta tell people what we got here. So this is a uh, out of the box Pico Code 83 turnout. All right, uh, Pico uses very, very large head blocks. So we're gonna snip those off because they're huge. Um, it also has a spring and we're gonna take the spring out. There's the spring. Measure one inch off the rail, and that's where we'll drill the hole for the machine. Good. What size hole saw is that? What? What size hole saw is that? What? What size hole saw is Stop that? Stop shouting! Holy crap, it's a one and one eighth. Jeez. Thank you. <laughs> Who's the ding dong now, bonehead? Hey, 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 I'm gonna fire you for that, buddy. <laughs> 
That's not one and one eighth. No, it's not. This was like one and three sixteenth, even bigger. And you really need you need a one and one eighth hole for the switch machine, and uh, we're gonna have problems that we're gonna have to try and adjust later. So uh, we screwed up, so you can learn. Please check, make sure the hole is one and one eighth. All right, now you're uh, you've got your hole drilled there. What's the next step? I don't remember. Hang on. Beauty. Okay. Okay. There's your plastic cover. Well, it'll keep all the dust and everything out of the machine. Yeah. So because our hole was too big, because our hole saw dimension was incorrect, we threw in some sticky tack, but that wasn't good enough. Luckily, we foresaw this happening. In your box, there's three extra little screws, and you just shove a screw in with a screwdriver, or any a drill, and that will hold it in position. Okay, so if you made a mistake and your hole saw is too big, uh, using the little screws that are included will, uh, will, will make sure it doesn't move. This is your cam hub. Okay, that's going to go over the cam. That's going to allow you to actually turn your switch machine. Okay, this is our throw bar. So I'm going to put our throw bar through the cam hub before installing the cam hub. I am drilling a new hole for our switch rod. So a couple of things to keep in mind. You don't want that cam hub down too tight or this is going to interfere. Okay, we've got our switch rod attached to the switch rod on the model switch. Okay, and you can see that I can throw, you can test it, throw them back and forth. Nice steam generator. There you go. So this is the first one we're doing. <laughs> so we need the instructions. Should be in there somewhere. Shoot, I pulled the drawer out. Oh, way to go, hoser. <sighs> Ah, it's a power supply, hang on. 12 volt, 1.5 amp. Yeah, that works. All right. So uh, we all have a bunch of these kicking around the house uh, because just don't throw them out. And I think this is from um, a shaver. I personally hate these terminal strips and I will probably be soldering all of my own. But, you know, for the purposes of this demonstration, we will use the AC terminal strips. So we don't actually have a fascia yet, so this is very much a temporary thing. So I'm, I am going to use the plate though, uh, and I'm going to uh, install it just to an exposed joist. So a lot of people say, you know, how do you, how do you use one of these power supplies, right? Because it's got a plug on the end. This is called nippers. Plug is now gone. Always use a real wire stripper. It'll save you big headaches later. It is much better to use heat shrink than to use masking tape or electrical tape because it doesn't take up any room. So even though I am just wiring this in temporarily, I'm still using heat shrink. Because I have no fascia, the technical term for this is a bodge. Don't try this at home. What are you doing, you ning -nong? Oh, you're such a it's so much fun. Look, look, look at that. Nothing, okay? Oh. The heat switch has gone off. It's going to be off for half an hour now. Okay, uh, once you have these set up, don't let your kids or grandkids play with them. Because if you go up and down all the time or you hold it on one way, it will overheat and there's a temperature switch inside which will shut it down so that you don't have to break it. You won't have to go and reinstall a new one. So don't do that. Otherwise, you're gone for half an hour. All right, you're in penalty box. Okay, so what are we doing uh, here now? These are uh, head block extensions. Um, so what you do is you, you line up the hole in your head block extensions with the, uh, with the uh, cam hub, right? And then we've already marked there, one of those marks is correct, where we're gonna trim those so that it goes up against and looks like the head block. Okay, so I see you've also got two different uh, sizes of head blocks. Uh, what's that all about? So this is a scale size head block extension. You got a microengineering switch or some other more scale switch. You can use these, um, but we're using Pico, which has quite heavy duty uh, head blocks. So we've got a, a fatter head block here. Everyone's switches are different, unfortunately. So we're gonna get, uh, we're gonna trim this, and we're gonna build up our switch stand, and we're gonna get it all installed. Have I got the top on this? No. <sighs> Working hard. Very hard. Oh, my eye. Ha! This is it. That's it right there. There's your target. It's 31B. 
when I'm doing the cutting and holding it should be okay. If you'd been more careful, you wouldn't have dropped it aren't they? It's microscopic. Okay, this is our uh, Rackhorth 31B switch stand base, all right? And this is our uh, rod or pole, for lack of a better word, our target sits on. Uh, it has to be a total smooth movement in and out. If it's stiff, you may need to ream the hole if there's some flash in there. With uh, This is a number 65 drill bit in a pin vise. It took about four seconds uh, to make sure that it's got freedom of movement. Okay, and then on top of that, we're going to add on the handle. Now the handle is just supposed to be a little bit of a tighter fit, so if it's not tight, you can draw, uh, add a drop of glue in there, and that'll be, it's got to be a friction fit uh, on that pole, and then we'll do the targets on top of that. We've already assembled our CN High 1B style target, and we're, uh, we're just about to put some glue on it, and then we'll uh, install it on the stand. Well, let's install the stand first, then we'll install the target. There we go. That's probably enough. E. What I'm doing now would be done after you've got scenery in. So I've pressed that down, and it really is just a pressure fit. I'm going to press that a little more. There we go. I've pressed that down. Okay, that's rotating every time. All right. Now I'm going to add a drop of glue onto these pins. Now the switch stands are made of POM slippery plastic, which means you've got to use CA rather than styrene cement. Okay, so I'm going to slip this Switch stand, which is falling out of my fingers. I'm going to switch it, slip it over the top. Okay, and I'm going to install it in those two pretty holes. Alright, it's installed. And drop onto the pole here. There we go. Now the handle, you don't you want the handle to turn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a drop of glue to the handle. Check that out. Alright, so we've now got the handle perpendicular to the rails. When it's set to a reverse, when it's set to normal, the handle is parallel to the rails. Okay. Lower, 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 much lower. That's good, that's good, that's good. Okay, so let's nip it right there. Ow! <laughs> Put some CA. Now, if it's straight, yeah, that's the way you want to put it on. Okay, so put it on. You know what? Pressure fits. Just, Can't yeah. see. Why let go Can't of see. your handle? I'll just do it just like that. Just like that. Magic touch. Okay, check it out. Oof! We got rotating switch stand, handle, and target. Can you even see that? Oh, isn't that gorgeous? Check that out. I'm a big fan of soldering. I hate those suitcase connectors. You see all of these uh, all these terminals on the terminal strip. We've actually you can actually uh, power two sets of accessories on this. So I'm going to use this side to power the frog, and this side later on will probably go to a signal system. Okay, so I've I've tapped in the red wire is tapping into my south DCC bus, and the black wire is tapping my north. I've got a green wire here, which is which is the wire that's coming from the frog on that particular switch. Now what we have to do is got to use a, a, a circuit tester to make sure that we haven't got these red and black wires reversed. The only way to do it, trial and error. If you're building a model railroad that you tend to be powered, you're probably going to have one of these things, which is a multimeter, multi-tester. Uh, you're going to put it on to the uh, continuity tester. So, you see, if you've got continuity, it makes a beep, okay? So, for example, we have continuity. We're on the south rail. This is line for straight. The frog should also have continuity with the south rail. It does. Okay. Now we check the north rail. Continuity. North rail and the frog should now not have continuity. Bingo. This is now wired properly, so the frog is now powered. My frog section is actually about three inches long. Okay. Uh, so you really need to have powered frogs. It's not an optional. So the switch machine is powering the frog. All right. So we can go uh, reverse. And now the frog is powered the wrong way. Now we're back to normal, and we give it some juice. Look how slow he's going. So you know that if that thing is dead, he's going to lose power.
Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, so there you have it. We've got our switch stand totally assembled and installed on Jason's layout. This is the first one. Uh, it was our first one too, yep. as if you yep. couldn't tell. We put the uh, error in trial and error, but uh, <laughs> once you get going, once you get used to uh, installing a few more, you're going to go from... Yeah, I'd uh, say it took us about uh, an yeah. hour total yep, for the, first, uh, for the yep. first one, and then I think another one would probably take half an hour, and after yep. that would like 10, 15 should, minutes Yeah, you should be able to get them down to that. Because, once yeah, I mean, once you know your switches, once you know how far you're going to go off your rail, mm -hmm. um, it is very, very easy to do. We were futzing around with figuring out our heights and our lengths for our head blocks and everything. And every, everyone's layout's different, so you yeah. have to expect that. Though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, I mean, it's working beautifully. This is everything I could dream of on this thing. And, it, look, Tortoise by Circuitron is the world's best-selling mm -hmm. switch machine power thing, and and uh, we, don't, we don't ever want to try and replace uh, Tortoise. Mm -hmm. We want to be number, number two. two. We want to be number two. So uh, for number two, Rapido Trains, Rail Crew, Switch Machine, we hope you'll order them. They are on the water now when, this, when we're filming this. They'll be yep. here in a few weeks. So by yep. the time you watched it, they're probably, probably in, yep. your, in your hobby shop. And uh, we're going to always have them in stock. All right. That's good. Uh, that's Jordan, Jason from Rapido signing off. Take care. Okay. Good. That wasn't bad. That was great. Mm -hmm.